HTTPS question. Uh, HTTPS uh, stands for HTTP over SSL or TLS, basically meaning an encrypted web connection between the client and the server. Uh, and then yes, please, it's just something uh, you put behind the uh, awesome things, the things that you like. Uh, so basically the talk is gonna show the latest benefits of uh, encrypting websites with SSL. Um, the weird thing under the title, not uh, J and Beyond, the, the thing there, that's my name, <laughs> it's Kirill. Uh, I'm a project manager at SiteGround. That's a picture of me. It was taken very early in the morning, so <laughs> the resemblance is not there. Uh, no, this is a very good illustration of what I do uh, at SiteGround. So, on the UX side, I make sure everything uh, we build uh, makes sense on the user side, that it's uh, well usable, uh, it's easy to understand. Uh, I work together with developers and designers on every project, so uh, we're together with them uh, to make sure we're using the, we're using the latest technology. Uh, and then together with the business, uh, we had, uh, together with the management, uh, we have to worry about the business circle and make sure whatever we're building, what we're building uh, is going to be marketed uh, well uh, and is going to be profitable for us. So this thing is a bit personal. Um, I'm just going to, just so you know who's speaking here, um, this kind of defines my life a bit. <laughs> when I discovered it, it was like a huge epiphany. So I grew up uh, on the web, like as a kid, I was not interested in anything else, but like no sports, nothing. I was just uh, on the internet all the time, so that kind of took care of the, uh, it made me, uh, like I have a natural feel for a good user experience. Uh, that naturally led to me experimenting with uh, HTML, Photoshop, so different technologies. I was building uh, websites at an early age. Before I joined SiteGround, I was actually building websites with uh, Joomla and WordPress, which I'm guessing a lot of people here do. Uh, and then business is something I studied. I'm a marketer. Yeah, that's enough. Uh, the only reason I've spent so much time here is because it, uh, this diagram also very well uh, unifies the whole talk. So we're going to talk about uh, encryption and SSL certificates uh, in all of the three circles. So uh, they provide extra privacy, uh, which I myself put in the user experience circle because I think we can all agree that having your credit card data stolen is a very bad user experience. Um, we're going to talk about how SSL opens up uh, doors to some speed optimizations. Um, on the technology side, we're going to look at uh, how SSL works very briefly, and then how to implement it in a Joomla website. Um, and in the business circle, we're going to look at uh, how it became a rank factor for Google. So <coughs> what does the industry think about encryption right now? Uh, this is kind of my own little spectrum. On one side are online stores and banks and like serious stuff, right? Uh, I think everybody in the industry agrees that SSO is completely and absolutely necessary. I don't think anybody argues there. But then you start moving down and you have art blogs, uh, cooking blogs, tech websites. Uh, and this is where like the skepticism comes in. Should I put that extra effort to encrypt my project? Why? Uh, so the purpose of this talk is um, to convince you that every project should be secure for, by default uh, because there are so many added benefits of encrypting websites. Uh, so the first reason we're going to look look at is privacy, um, because it's scary, <laughs> and um, fear usually motivates us <coughs> to do this stuff. <laughs> uh, so I don't know how many of you are aware of the uh, concept of network sniffing. This here is a demo of a software called Dibuki. It's freely downloadable on Mac. Uh, and basically, as long as you're connected to the same Wi-Fi network, uh, you can scan all the devices that are connected on the same Wi-Fi network as well. Uh, and then what you can do, uh, you can target a device and you can start monitoring like every HTTP request that it's making. So you can see 
uh, if we target your phone, for example, I can see every single website that you're visiting. Yeah. And that's the case when it's unencrypted, like when there's no SSL on the website, you can see the whole address. Um, you can pick up like session cookies, I can log in as you. Um, like if you're logging into the back end of your, like somebody called you, you're logging into the back end of your Joomla website. Uh, right now, uh, that stuff is traveling between, between you and the server in plain text and I can basically sniff it up. Um, the good news is that when there is an SSL certificate on the website, uh, it's even in here. Uh, you can only see like the domain name of what the person is browsing. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And um, you wouldn't be able to sniff up credentials. Um, some people might uh, reject that and say, yeah, you for that, you got to be connected to the same Wi-Fi. Uh, my Wi-Fi has a password, it's really safe. Well, first of all, we use unsecure networks. Like, uh, I'm guessing some people here are out of town. <laughs> and like, finding an unsecure Wi-Fi network is like gold, right? I've probably done it since yesterday at least seven, eight times. I've connected to something, I've used it, uh, and like, it's scary, like when you know what I showed you before. Um, the second thing is, even if um, your your Wi-Fi is secured, it's uh, still possible to crack it. Uh, basically, any laptop or uh, even using a, a simple and cheap Wi-Fi dongle can be put into passive mode. Uh, it can wait for another device to connect to that uh, network, knowing the password. It intercepts a handshake packet and then that can be easily uh, decrypted. So it's not, yeah, basically I just want to say uh, Wi-Fi networks are not as secure as they, as they seem, even when they do have passwords. Um, the good news is we already saw in the demo is uh, that SSL basically fi fixes these issues. Uh, so, users of your website, uh, nobody can see what exactly they're browsing. Uh, if they're logging into your website, uh, they can pick up their credentials. And then you, as an admin of the of website, uh, are also not compromising your credentials. Yeah. Are you not supposed to be using TLS by now? Yeah, I'm kind of using the two interchangeably. I don't want to get it's into the difference. Too. Yeah, it's TLS. Because it people are so familiar with SSL, but yeah. actually not, well, technically not correct as you know. Yeah, yeah. I just don't want to get into the difference. Um, we can treat them as uh, the same thing for this presentation. And you know, as certificate certificates, they're marketed that way. Like, when you go yeah, to buy exactly. it, that's, that's how it's marketed. So, so it's easier, I think, to not get into the, the technicalities. Um, so this, this thing here, I just want to make an analogy. Like this is something uh, you see all the time in uh, buildings. Uh, and it's there because uh, building owners don't want you to slip and fall on their floor and sue them. Um, so as website owners, uh, I think we kind of have the same responsibility to protect the privacy of our users. Uh, you know, we don't want to expose uh, what they're reading or especially if they're uh, logging into our website. Um, so now, just uh, so you know how SSL works, we're gonna do a quick demo, uh, just so you find out why it's secure. Uh, for this, <laughs> I'm bringing along two friends. This is Adele and uh, Lionel Richie. Adele is going to be the client side, so the browser and uh, Lionel Richie is uh, the server. You can see up there he has a SSL certificate. Uh, he has a public and a private key. So to start the secure connection, uh, Abdel asks first, she generates a random number and then uh, <laughs> she has a song, right? It goes like, hello, it's me. <laughs> I was wondering if after all these years you wanted to use SSL. <laughs> That's called the SSL session request. 
so she sends that over to the server uh, together with a random number. Uh, the server gets that random number, generates its own random number, and then uh, says hello back. Lionel Richie also has a song that goes, <laughs> hello, is it me you're looking for? I can't sing it, fortunately. <laughs> uh, that's the server hello. Uh, and <coughs> together with that, uh, the server sends over the SSO certificate, the random number he just uh, generated, and uh, the public key. So Avil, the client, the browser, adds that to uh, her assets. Uh, this is where the, the browser checks the SSO certificate. So basically, uh, checks if it's signed by a certificate authority that is trusted. Uh, it checks if, uh, if it's expired. If uh, anything's wrong with the certificate, the browser throws this uh, red warning of death. I, I'm sure you've seen it. Um, and then what happens next is uh, on the Adele side, <laughs> she gets on PMS. <laughs> This is uh, the, the pre-master secret. It's, uh, she generates another, basically, a random number. Um, encrypts it with the public key of the server, uh, and then sends it over. And the most important part here is that whatever is uh, encrypted with the public key can only be decrypted with the private key, uh, which is there, right? And this part has never traveled across the wire. And this is what basically uh, makes SSL secure. It's uh, it's a math, it's a one-way mathematical function. Uh, so something encrypted with the public key can only be decrypted with the private key, which never travels across. Uh, so from there, uh, with all the assets uh, that they have on both sides, uh, each side on their own basically uses an algorithm. Uh, the, the two random numbers, the, the pre-master secret, and part of the SSO certificate is used to generate a master secret. And from then on, uh, basically, the two sites start, connect, uh, start communicating uh, through an encrypted connection uh, that nobody can decrypt. Um, so that kind of takes care of the traditional side of uh, SSL, right? Uh, it's, it's the application that we're most used to hearing about, privacy. Mm. Uh, now we're gonna get into some of the added benefits that I was mentioning in, uh, in the beginning. Uh, and so the second reason to use uh, SSL on your sites is uh, speed. Uh, HTTP 2 is uh, an update to the HTTP protocol. It's the first one in 11 years or something, which in web years uh, is a lot of time. Dog years, cat years, whatever years, it's a lot of time. Um, so why is this even in this presentation? Is because to use uh, HTTP 2, browsers have decided to uh, only run it when the website is encrypted. So if, if you want HTTP2 on your website, you have to, to run SSL. Uh, why did they do this? Mm, basically, it's, it's an incentive to, to make the web more secure. Uh, so kind of in the old days, uh, a lot of people were concerned that the, the handshake between Adele and Lionel Richie that I showed you before is going to slow stuff down because it is uh, some server work. Uh, but the web has evolved and uh, like that whole encryption process doesn't really take that much resources. And uh, when you apply something like HTTP2 to your website, it can actually make it a lot faster. Uh, <coughs> the, like the one thing that you have to know about HTTP2 is uh, multiplexing. I mean, it's it's a very extensive update of the protocol. Uh, but like the one thing you have to know, just so you know why it's faster. Uh, basically, in HTTP one, every asset, every file, every request between client and server uh, had to be done in uh, a single TCP connection and one after the other. So to load the next file, you needed. 
to load the previous one. Uh, this is no longer true with HTTP2. It can load resources at the same time through a single uh, HTTP connection, uh, TCP connection, sorry. Um, and probably uh, the best thing about HTTP2 is uh, that it's very easy to, to run if your web host supports it. Uh, basically, you just install SSL on your <coughs> site and it'll start running HTTP2. But you have to check uh, if your web host supports it. Uh, so the best thing to see, the best way to see a new technology is through a demo. I'll try and do this in the browser. Uh, uh, it's an HTTP2, uh, yeah, it's a demo of HTTP2. So basically, um, this, this image is made up of 180 smaller images. Uh, and now I'll show you how it loads under HTTP1 and HTTP2. Uh, so this is HTTP1. <coughs> you can see how it's uh, loading. And uh, notice on the network tab here how every resource is loading one after the other. Uh, and now this is HTTP2. Much faster, right? And as I said earlier, the, all the assets can be loaded at the same time. So let's go back. So now you've seen HTTP2. Um, this is the link if you want to see the demo by yourself. These are just uh, UFSI made in case we didn't have internet. Uh, so reason three, rank higher in Google. Uh, about a year ago, I think, uh, Google announced that uh, SSL is now a rank factor. Basically, all other parts being equal, if your website has SSL, it will rank higher uh, than if it doesn't. Um, of course, when you talk about SEO, it's a little uh, tricky. I try to find out how big of a factor it is in the rankings. The answer is uh, it's not a major one. Um, there are two, three other, two, three hundred other things in Google's algorithm. We don't know how it works. Uh, they don't want us to know how it works. Uh, but basically, there's a rule of thumb with SEO. What's good for users is uh, is good for you uh, for for rankings. That's what Google is after, and that's what they will always be after. So, I think we agreed earlier that uh, SSL is good for your users. So, it'll be good for Google. Um, and it's just one extra thing you can you can do uh, to improve your rankings. It, and it's simple. And also, with reason number four, it's free. Uh, Let's Encrypt is uh, an open certificate authority. It's a few months old. Um, <coughs> they just issued their 2 million certificate. Uh, that's because a lot of hosts uh, are adopting it. I'm very proud to say that uh, SiteGround was one of the very first to, to implement it. Uh, at this link here, um, is a list of web hosts that support it. There's around uh, 70 or 80, like <coughs> last time I looked. And uh, a lot of hosts are just uh, integrating it with a very easy uh, installation. With us, it's a, it's a one thing, one click thing. It takes basically 30 seconds. Uh, the no dedicated IP part. That kind of developed together with us uh, with Let's Encrypt. It's not really related. Like it's no longer uh, necessary to have a dedicated IP to run SSL. Uh, why is that important? Uh, because integrating it in this way, uh, you don't have to pay for a dedicated IP. So, 
So that makes it completely, completely free. Uh, let's encrypt. Certificates are auto-renewable. Uh, they run for 90 days and then they will just auto-renew, which is very useful uh, because when your SSL expires, you get a warning in the browser. Um, so now we're going to get into some very quick uh, implementation uh, best practices to start running SSL on your website, particularly a uh, Joomla one. So the first part is uh, to get a certificate, either uh, if your host, support, if your host uh, supports it, you get, get a Let's Encrypt one, or you can get a paid one. Um, the second step should also be easy for the majority. Uh, your host should configure the SSL on your server. Um, and then the third uh, part, I'm kind of going to break down and show in a few more slides. It's how to uh, make sure your site is forcing SSL, running through SSL. Uh, and then this is a very useful uh, tool to test. So let's go into the Joomla configuration. Um, after you've gotten an SSL certificate, after it's installed on your uh, server, um, there's a very cool Joomla setting that forces SSL uh, on this entire site. Um, and in most cases, this, this is enough for the site to start running and forcing SSL. It's very simple. If something for some reason goes wrong here, uh, it's also possible to do it through an HD access file or a con configuration PHP. Um, there's another interesting setting of the login form module. Uh, for some reason, when you set the previous one, when you make your site uh, run and force SSL, uh, for some reason, this setting doesn't like it doesn't encrypt the login form by by default. Uh, I haven't actually tested it. If it might be just uh, a UX issue. Maybe we can address it and then make it happen session. I don't know. But I think it's a good idea to also go into the module manager and uh, change this to yes, so that uh, whenever you're logging into your Joomla administrator, uh, credentials are also encrypted. Yeah? Uh, I agree with you. It would be nice if that's automatic. Uh, your slide before, where you can set the entire site to force SSL, uh -huh. there's a current issue at the moment. If you don't have SSL installed on your website, you can't get into your Joomla site anymore. Yeah, that's why it's important to, uh, then you have to do, these, do these things in order. Well, exactly. So, in the next Joomla release, we fix that, that we check if SSL is available uh -huh. before actually enforcing this setting. Uh -huh. So, that would be nice in combination with your option of encrypting the backend form. Then everything will work and the user doesn't really have to think about it. Mm -hmm. or Sometimes you can have an SSL certificate installed or it's removed or it's yeah, not yeah. working for some reason, then at least you can still get into your website. Mm -hmm. Next, in the very, very next... Uh, 3.6. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just some background information. So uh -huh. after making a session, it would be nice if somebody could work <coughs> on that. Yeah, I think it should be addressed. Thanks. <coughs> um, this is the... SSL checker that I mentioned. Uh, it's at this address, it's free. So basically after you've done the previous few steps, it's a good idea to, to check if everything is all right. Uh, this is a very detailed one. Um, and if anything is wrong with your SSL configuration, it'll show up. Uh, and one last thing that I want to mention about the implementation is uh, when you're migrating from HTTP uh, to HTTPS, uh, a lot of times you get, fix, uh, you get mixed content on the site uh, because there are requests to HTTP resources. Uh, so you might have a link to a CSS file that's still in HTTP. And that's, a, that's still a security issue. Those need to be fixed. Um, this here is a link to a tool that will crawl your like all the pages of your website and uh, basically show you where there's uh, mixed content. Uh, I think the best way to do this is to find them and fix them by by hand. Uh, so.
so that's about all I have before maybe having questions I just like to recap uh, really quick uh, first thing this picture is not just a random stock photo it is but it has like a meaning uh, like the internet is uh, so instant now uh, it's such a like a good experience we we forget that it travels across wires and that a lot of things are out of our control so uh, yeah, think about privacy, uh, and uh, then after after the privacy stuff, we looked at uh, some of the added, I think, non-traditional benefits of SSL, uh, how it can speed up your website, uh, and then also the, how it can improve search engine rankings, uh, and then why not do it when uh, it's now free? So thank you. If you have any questions, I'm glad you take them. Yep. I'm gonna be paying now. I just, hey. wondered, I just wondered if there are any kind of tool to easily spot the HTTP uh, uh -huh. links on your website, because uh, so it's easier for users to resolve them, or is it really just going through the source code and trying to find it? I think it just goes through your HTML because uh, it's, <coughs> it's a front end problem. <coughs> I keep writing tools or something. Yes, okay. Mostly, I guess most of you have been tools for our work. It's a little settling one of the pages, just take it off. No. Now, what I've seen is if you give yourself a certificate, finish it or whatever. Yeah. It doesn't pack into it. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah, anybody else? Yeah, it's the same question, yes. In Spain, uh, all the government places uh, has an untrusted uh, SSL certified. Yeah, that's true. And uh, you get this red flag with yeah. Chrome. Mm -hmm. My question is, if I have my page with that script, I will get this red flag? No, no, no. Yeah. For sure. It's, uh, it's a trusted. Sure. Yeah. 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 It's trusted. Yeah. 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 Let's, yeah. let's encrypt this trusted by all, all the main government pages. Uh, has this untrusted uh, certification, <laughs> you get this. Oh, yeah, it's 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 uh, if you get a C grade or an F grade, it's not because of your SSL certificate. It can be because of your hosting provider. So uh, yeah, that's possible. Yes. Yeah. So most yes. people uh, who use it check in uh, for my customers and other uh, other people I know they get scared when they get C grade or something. But it's not uh, because you are doing something. Most mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you see an issue here, you gotta find uh, where it is, and sometimes it'll be <coughs> your web host, sometimes it'll be your developer, depends. Yeah.